And we are live. <laughs> right. How you been, Austin? I've been doing well, and you? Pretty good, pretty good. You know what? I wanted to start off by saying thank you so much for uh, accepting the invitation to be on my oh, on no my problem. live stream today. No, no, no problem. Happy to be here. Thank I know you we had a little support you've shown in the channel. You're one of the first <laughs> people to ever comment. <laughs> I, I know uh, there was a little bit of a, a hiccup with the time and all that. I know when we scheduled this, we were still on, I guess, daylight savings and didn't realize it that we were going to be doing it after that. Uh, so a little bit of a, an apology for, for starting low. I, I know we you had said 10 o'clock your time, but when I guess it automatically shifted. It switched yeah, it over to 11. No, it's no problem, though. I'm sure. All right. I just wanted to make sure I'm not interfering with your schedule. It's, I, I try to be respectful of people's time. It's just... Okay. You know, it's it's the the one thing we can never get back is time. So, yeah. <laughs> but uh, other than that, I, I I appreciate you being here, and uh, you know, it's uh, like we were just talking a lot about a little while ago uh, before we started live. I went out of curiosity to go look as roughly when you had started, mm -hmm. and uh, for some reason, I knew it hadn't been that long, but I thought it was a little bit longer than than what it's showing on there, according to your. Your data in there, when you look at it, you started in uh, July, like 2022. Yeah, yeah, around there sounds right. Yeah, so right at the right, I think it says July 3rd, so it was the day before uh, 4th of July. So that'll be an easy anniversary for you to remember. Right, I know I created the channel a few months before I actually started posting anything. But yeah, it, it was the end of 2022, the last half. Yeah, yeah, but, um, you know, I... Well, one of the things that I really wanted to ask, because for the longest time, I've been telling um, people that have been thinking about starting up a channel mm -hmm. or or they're, they're you know, kind of like, oh, you know, I'm going to start keeping an aquarium and eventually I want to do a channel. I always tell them, you know, what would be really neat that I haven't seen is somebody that starts from zero and mm -hmm. shows the, the, the progress along the way, all the good and the bad. And when I came across your channel, that's the perception that I took away from it. Now, am I right or am I mistaken in assuming that? No, no, that's definitely, you know, what I wanted to do. Uh, you know, I've been interested in the hobby in a while, but keeping a whole fish room, it seemed like it would just be a lot, you know, for me before. So I started thinking, you know, why can't I just have a big tank and just put everything I want in there? So that's how this came about. I figured I'd start doing the videos when I first started it up and been going ever since then. Now, did you have any experience prior to? I mean, because most people that start off in the aquarium, it's going to be somewhere like in the ten and twenty gallon tank. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, you start dealing with all the issues that come along with the learning. You know, sometimes you have some make outbreak. Was that something that you were that you were aware of, or are you just kind of like let's go big or go home? No, no, no. So I did have another tank. It was like a corner Pentagon, like a around 50 gallons, something like that tank. I had that for a long time. I had, you know, just some guppies, uh, mollies in there, a couple of plants. I liked it so much. I always wanted more. And, uh, you know, when I got married and moved to the current location I'm at, I, you know, was able to convince my wife to let me get this. So, <laughs> Well, that's a, that's a big, that's a big plus being able to convince your better half to allow you yeah. to have not only a tank, but a 400 gallon tank. And uh, I'm assuming it's like, somewhere in the living room or somewhere there where you get a lot of traffic yeah, coming in. Yeah, it's out. in the living room area. You know, I had promised I was going to keep it looking nice and presentable and everything. <laughs> but yeah, we got a good space for it. Okay. Now, does she kind of enjoy the fish also? Or or it was kind of like, this is all you. I just don't want it to be an eyesore. She just knew it was my little hobby. She, you know, likes it and everything, but she's not as, you know, into it as I am. Uh, but no, she definitely supports it. Oh, nice. It's always great to have um, the support from your from your spouse. Or, you know, it's just makes things a little bit easier. No, definitely. I'm a little bit jealous because I love to have at least one aquarium inside the house. <laughs> uh, but I, I guess in a way it's good and uh, that I don't because if I had that one inside, I probably wouldn't want to come out here to the heat <laughs> in the garage and probably would neglect all the rest of the other aquariums. Or maybe I, I need to go the route you did and get one big massive aquarium and call it a day. But, you know, it's one of the other things that, that's interesting is that I haven't seen you do mm -hmm. is what a lot of us is what we, they call MTS, multiple tank syndrome. 
um, you've managed to stay with, with that one 400 gallon and that's it, right? Yeah. The only other thing I have is like, I have a 10 gallon and a 20 gallon that I used to like quarantine, uh, but they're not normally full. So I keep them empty. Um, I, I just like having the big tank, but I'm able to keep most of the things I like in there. So, you know, I'm able to stick with just one for now. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully I'll have some more in the future, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah. It, it's going to, it's going to be interesting uh, to see where you would put them because that, I'm assuming that takes up at least a, a whole wall in your in your house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it takes a, up a good portion of the the wall I have right here. So yeah, I'd have definitely have to find some area. Uh, now, I know you said you had kept the 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 hexagon tank, mm -hmm. and um, on that one was that your very first aquarium? So no, when I was younger, uh, my father had an aquarium that you know somebody didn't want anymore. They gave it to him. I can't even remember what size it was, but I, I know it wasn't big enough for like the three ostriches we had in there. <laughs> so that was the first time we started keeping fish. Um, eventually what happened is it started leaking and you know, he does construction. So he's like, oh, I could redo this silicone easily. What we didn't know is he had to use this, you know, a specific silicone to seal a fish tank. That ended up killing the fish. I didn't have any for a while. Then uh, in college or yeah, last year of college or last two years, that's when I got the corner tank. And ever since then, I've you know, had fish tank. So. Yeah. So along that time, you've kind of had already worked out through, you know, cycling an aquarium and, and dealing with yeah. some of the, it always seems like when you're starting out and it's, it makes sense because the, uh, most of the times when we start with an aquarium, it's not cycled. So you're going to stress the fish out. You're going to get ick. That's almost guaranteed when you start up a tank from zero mm -hmm. and, um, so you you had already dealt with some of those issues. Yes, yes. I knew by then I had to let this cycle before I put anything in it. Um, but yeah, yeah, I learned a lot from YouTube as well. I was always watching a lot of the fish YouTubers. So, you know, I think that helped a lot. Yeah. Now, what are some of the things that you weren't expecting on, on, a, on a size difference? You know, as far as, you know, you were keeping, what was that, about a 20 gallon you said that you had? Yeah, I think and it was like... 40 something, maybe 50, well, somewhere around there. Yeah. Okay. But much obviously you're going to a much larger uh, aquarium. What were some of the challenges that you weren't expecting? Everything from, you know, just setting it up to some of the issues that you've had. So it, it took a lot of time to set it up. Um, you know, from the time I even had the substrate, I, I have black diamond blasting sand is what I use in here. Uh, but even like, oh, I'll, I'll just wash it all, then I'll put it in there. I didn't realize how long it takes to do things like that. <laughs> I washed maybe a few buckets of it, and they were like, no, I'm just going to put this in here, fill it up slowly, and we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, the things like that, I definitely had to, you know, work a lot on getting all the hard scape. Um, I have had a lot of mistakes, like, you know, the I don't fill it up with a bucket like I could do when I had a smaller tank. So I would use a water hose to, of course, fill it up right from outside. And I had one situation where I used the water hose. I'm pretty sure now it was the water hose. I filled up the tank and the next day, like half the fish in there were gone. They were just dead. So I had no idea what happened at first. But I think now there must have been something on like the inside lining or something of the water hose uh, that got in the water. So. Yeah, well, sometimes I don't know what your your water treatment facility uses, mm -hmm. but there's a certain time of the year where they'll add either a little bit more chlorine or chloramine mm -hmm. into the water systems because of, you know, the changing of the, of the seasons and stuff like that. And if you're used to treating your aquarium with a certain amount, sometimes you got to double up on it just because, mm -hmm. you know, they've added that much more. I, out here for us, we know it's chlorine. So anytime I open up the spigot and you can really smell the chlorine, I know that they've done um, some work at the at the treatment facility. Um, so, you know, you just got to, those are little things that sometimes you, you kind of start picking up, especially when you're dealing with a whole bunch of other aquariums. But, um, you know, I guess one of the, the, the upsides of having such a large aquarium is that you have time to react to certain things. But yeah. when things go wrong, they must go, you know, horribly wrong because it's a lot. Oh, of yeah, water. yeah. I had one other situation where, um, like the filtration on this tank, I have two FX6s, uh, where one of the hoses for the, the outlet on one of them came loose, sprayed water everywhere. 
you know, I came out, of course, the tank water is very low. I'm like, oh, what happened? I walk out here, the carpet is wet. So I'm like, well, all right, now we're going to have to drain the tank, get everything out of it, you know, find somewhere to put 500 pounds of sand, <laughs> get the carpet cleaned, and then start over again. So you, you had to actually do all of that, break it down, and start from, from zero again? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I had the, you know, the fish. I put the fish in other tanks, uh, yeah. you know, other smaller tanks I had then. But so some of them went back in. But, yeah, I had to set everything up over again. So did your wife at that point say, this is a bad idea, keeping an aquarium with that much water in the living room? <laughs> She's like, oh, okay, we have, to, we have to make sure now this does not happen again. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's pretty nice of her to, you know, underst uh, very understanding on her side. I don't know if I, I think they would have kicked me out with uh, aquariums and everything out of the house if I did something like that. <laughs> yeah, I got a warning. I guess I was lucky. <laughs> Now you haven't had any more incidents where I, what my biggest fear would be because of the way you said that, that I overfill it. You know, you, you go and put the holes, you know, it takes a while. You walk away, come back and that thing is running over. Have you ever had that happen? Yeah, yes. No, I haven't had that happen yet. You know, thankfully, um, anytime I fill it up, I'm usually just, it's the living room. So I just sit out here, watch TV, whatever. I just make sure I watch it real closely. When I know it's getting closer to the top, I like slow down the water. So just in case I'm not, you know, paying attention for a second. So, yeah, I really try to make sure that doesn't happen. I also bought off Amazon some sensors that should let you know, you know, when okay. the water hits it. I have not set them up yet. That's something I definitely should do. Uh, but, yeah, I've avoided it as, you know, as far as now. Are, I wonder if it would be nice to be able to set them up with magnets so that you can put them, you know, like the algae scrapers that you use? Yeah. So yeah. you can put it, you know, probably about two or three inches below the water line that you actually want. So in case you're not paying attention, you hear it. But uh, as far as sitting in the living room and watching it, I'm going to tell you, I've been in this in this room with these mm -hmm. right next to my side doing a live stream, supposedly watching it, and still managed to overrun them. So, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm definitely not above it happening. So, yeah, I definitely need to set up those water sensors. It's one of those things where I've learned now that I, I don't care. Even if I'm in the same area, I got to be 100% focused on it because if I – if I get onto a chat or watching a video, I've, uh, hundreds of times I've done it in here. Where I luckily I'm in the garage and I have cement mm -hmm. floor, and it's got a slight, um, you know, uh, slight dip in the elevation, so it runs out the front door. <laughs> Just got to roll up the gates and let it flow out. Oh wow! <laughs> so I know um, I one of the like I said one of the things that I really 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 enjoyed about watching your your videos was that whole idea of and i think that's really placed into the name the evolving tank but it's also mm -hmm. the your your evolving learning experience with this because i remember one time watching a video where you had bought some new fish and you just strip uh plopped and dropped them in there i'm going oh no i don't <laughs> want to say nothing but i was like usually that you know normally like I would say eight out of 10 times that works out okay. Mm -hmm. But it always seems that when you film stuff like that, it always goes sideways for some reason. Yep, I remember that very time. That was when I added the Congo testers in here. I saw that comment. And of course, you know, I'm in the future from when I posted the video. I'm like, you don't even know right now I'm dealing with Ick in the tank right now because one of them had it. <laughs> it, it, it's, it yeah. It's like one I said, of those things I know, of course, I should quarantine, but I just, you know, got a little impatient, just put them in there. Now, Here's the thing, though. How expensive was it to treat a 400-gallon aquarium? Did that really, or did you end up lowering the water level to be able to treat less less volume of water, or did you just bite the bullet and treat it the whole 400 gallons? So I did lower it a little bit, but what I ended up getting was just like it was a big, like maybe a gallon jug of Ikex. I guess it was actually meant for ponds, so they sold it in a, you know a bigger yeah. uh, a bigger bottle. But yeah, that had to be how much did it cost? At least seventy something dollars. <laughs> yeah, it's I <laughs> at least it was in the little packets, you know, or, or, or trying to, you know, with the little bottles. But yeah, that those concentrated from but yeah, it's still pretty expensive. How many did you eventually end up fixing the problem or did you just, you know, have to get new fish or oh no, no, after the treatment, everything was good. Everything mm -hmm. was good. How many heaters are you running in that thing? <laughs> well, I have one little Fluval heater. Uh, it's set at what, like 70, it says 76 right now. 
the room I'm in, it's usually between okay. 74 to 76 degrees anyway. So I, I don't worry about it too much. It's really just there for peace of mind. I can see the green light. I know it's, it should be within a certain range. So now when you when you were treating for the ick, how did you manage to elevate the temperature in that? But with that little heater did it for you, or did you have to keep your house a little bit warmer? <laughs> no, no, I didn't elevate the, the temperature at all. I just used the uh, ickx. Okay. Yeah, because usually that's that's one of the things that they'll tell you is to elevate it, all you're doing is um uh, uh, accelerating the, the process of the of the cyst becoming a, a swimming uh, larva so that the 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 medication will actually kill that because it won't kill the cyst the little white dots that's are just kind of like little i guess for lack of a better term little eggs that are on the skin of the fish but you want them to to be able to rupture quicker so that that uh, parasite that's in there is swimming in the water column and that's what's going to kill it so uh, pretty much but, you're like you're um speeding up their life cycle mm -hmm. that's all you're doing with the temperature uh, and for the most part, usually I know with it, that ICX is, is actually the one product that I do use. Mm -hmm. And uh, I haven't had to use it in a long time. Knock on wood. I don't have to. Um, but it works. That's, that's the one that I've that I've found that actually works. And usually just one treatment usually does it for me. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm a big believer on ICX. Yeah, it definitely worked for me. I did find out how much it could you stain your hands up, though. <laughs> Oh yeah, and that's an acrylic tank. It didn't. It didn't leave a blue tint on the on the acrylic. No, no, it seems to be fine. Okay, yeah. Well, you're lucky it doesn't. It didn't have any silicone because in silicone, you, that's how you you can tell even by watching videos of somebody that's had to treat a, an aquarium that's got a glass aquarium. <laughs> if you see the the blue tint in the in the silicone, you go, oh, they oh, had to do with it. <laughs> But no, no, I seem to have gotten away with it. Everything looks good. <laughs> so what are your future plans? Oh, the other thing, the other thing that I really liked about that 400 gallon, because most people, what they'll, they get a big tank mm -hmm. and automatically it's like big fish. Mm -hmm. And, and when I saw what you were doing with it, I was like, yes, because I, I, I like keeping some of the smaller fish and, and I actually have a 300 that's sitting here on the floor that I need to get around to fix it. And, um, the whole idea of that was like, oh, I'm going to set this up and it's going to be like all these smaller fish. Because I don't know if you noticed that with your aquarium, mm -hmm. and this is just a theory that I have, that when you have that much room for the smaller fish, you're going to see behaviors you typically wouldn't see on a smaller aquarium because they're going to feel a little bit more comfortable. Now, with the fish that you're having there, are you noticing any of that stuff where it's a little bit different than when you kept them in the hexagon? So that was mainly the guppies. The guppies seem to act the same, but I know there are things I probably get away with because it's larger. Like I have three rainbow sharks in this one aquarium and they do okay. I'm sure if it was a smaller tank, they didn't have much space. They would be fighting a lot more, but you know, I, I seem to get away with it here. Yeah. Cause you have some peacock gudgeons in there and I know when they start breeding, they can be a little bit territorial, but with 400 gallons, I mean, they probably have yeah. a good section of the real estate in there. Yeah, unfortunately, two of them passed away. I don't know if they got sick or what happened exactly. But over time, two of them did. I have one more in here, but they're fine. I never really saw them fighting other than one time. I don't know if they're getting ready to breed. I could see the, what I guess was the two males. I really wanted to get a male and two females, but one of them ended up being, you know, one of the ones I thought was a female ended up being a male as well. So I guess they were kind of sparring or something. Yeah, they're just kind of flashing at each other, yeah, trying yeah. to establish their hierarchy. So what other species? I know you have Congo tetras in there. I know you had those peacocks. You had some guppies. I've seen, I think, platys in there. Yeah, I have some platys in there. Now, I actually have a list. Uh, oh, let's okay. see, I have a mono shrimp, the Congo tetra, the guppies, rose line sharks, the three rainbow sharks. You know, one is uh, the regular rainbow shark. One is a ghost shark. One is an albino rainbow shark. Then I have the albino millennium rainbows. Goida River Rainbows, Hillstream Loaches, the Peacock Gudgeon, two Empire Gudgeons, Siamese Algae Eater, Glow Light Danios, uh, the Platys, Stir by Corridor. I have the Dwarf Mexican Crawfish in here now, Bamboo Shrimp, and I just added the Beta. <laughs> yeah, that was an interesting dad, too. That, um, why, why a Beta? 
I, I just wanted to try it. I wanted to see how it does. Of course, I was watching to see, you know, make sure everything was good with it, but it, it seems to be doing fine here. Now, one of the things I did notice, but I don't know if it's just the section that it was in there, it seemed like the flow was pretty strong and the guy was getting blown away, but I'm sure I'm assuming that in an aquarium that big, you've got to have some areas that have a lot less flow. And I think you do because I'm looking at the stem plants behind you and they don't seem to be waving too much. So he yeah, he was there by choice, I'm assuming. Yeah, sometimes he'll swim up into it. He'll swim out of it. Uh, he has this area between these uh, like breeding cages, things I have in there right now. He'll like wedge himself between those and the glass. You know, he'll swim up in some roots rest there. He'll swim lower down in the plants and stuff. There's plenty of areas for him. Is he still lurking up at the top? I know you had some questions regarding that. Yeah, I know. Earlier today, I just saw him near the bottom. Let me see if I can tell where he is now. Oh, yep, he's at the top right now, right here in the middle. I can see him. But he's swimming around. He's out and about more, you know, a lot now. I guess he had to get used to having bigger fish in there, probably. Yeah. Usually, the only problem with the, with the bettas, especially the fancy bettas, the ones that have the flowing fins, they get a little bit more tired because they're not used to uh, big volumes of water. They usually, you know... They're they're really, I know people get all all uppity about it, and and you have these big fights about how much space is the adequate space for for a beta, mm -hmm. um, but you know a lot of the times they're they're bred in pretty shallow water, so mm -hmm. and and the reason is because the the large fins, it takes makes them harder for them to move. So just you know it's kind of like somebody with with a lot more weight, it's going to be more difficult for them to move than than it is. Yeah. Uh, somebody that's a little bit slimmer and fit. Uh, but the placards, which are like the wild type, those guys mm -hmm. are doing fine because, you know, they don't they don't have that extra flowness that they have to try to work their way through the water. Yeah, I was never into, uh, you know, they look fine, but personally I just never was really into the fish that have the long flowing fins, uh, like those, the guppies as well. I know there's a lot that mm -hmm. have that. Uh, the one I have in here is an alien better. Its fins, uh, I think, are pretty much on the shore. Yeah, side. it's more like the wild type. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it seems to do well. Yeah, so you know, it's but yeah, they're they're fine. I I I have kept them in like 10 gallon tanks or five gallon. I have one that I'm trying to breed right now in a five. Well, it's actually not even five gallons, it's probably two and a half because I got it halfway filled. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, you know, they do fine in there, but I know I, I when I saw that, I was like, I wonder who's gonna come after Austin because uh you got <laughs> people when with there's certain fish that'll trigger responses from people and betta seems to be one of those those triggering fish for some people but you know i know the behavior that's kind of typical they'll hang up at the top because they are predatory and in the wild they're used to waiting for little insects to fall on the surface of the water and that's how they eat yeah yeah i know at first when i had him in there like you said he would swim in areas where the flow was strong i guess he didn't know where to hang out but now he's fine most of the time. I don't see him getting blown around much anymore. He's usually, he has his areas where, you know, the water just isn't as fast. So he's fine. Yeah. Now, are you, are you pretty much done stocking your, your aquarium or is there any other fish that you're kind of thinking maybe in the future you're going to put in there? So I don't know what I'm going to do from here. I'm no, it's not done. I want to add more. I just have to decide what it's going to be. Uh, you know, there's always a certain fish I would love to keep, but, you know, it has to work with everything that's already in there. I was always interested in puffer fish, but I don't think that would be good for the shrimp or the crawfish, probably. Um, I, I, I like <laughs> rope fish as well, but I know I would have to probably cover the top. I know they, you know, supposedly can escape very well. Uh, but, yeah, there's a lot of fish I would like. I just need to keep doing research, see what I think will work on here. And you're, that's, that's strictly becoming a community tank. I mean, there's no plans yeah. in the future to make it some uh, something else other than a community aquarium i have no idea what it'll be in the future but for right now i'm having a lot of fun with the community i'm having a lot of fun with the plants so that's what i'm doing i noticed you mentioned like is are the rainbow fish your your showcase showcase fish that you're putting in there is that really the direction you're going with it or i've never really thought of any of the specific fish as a showcase fish uh, it's one of those things I've actually found out, you know, as I've been keeping the fish, my kind of taste and what I like have kind of evolved as well. I used to, for no particular reason, I wasn't really into rainbow fish, but I saw those at the store one day. I'm like, oh, I like how those look. So I went ahead and got them and now they're here as well. It was never any plan to have them be the 
the centerpiece or anything, but I know I don't know in the end after the tank is fully stocked what you would consider the the centerpiece. Yeah, yeah. And the only thing with rainbow fish is you must have seen them at the at the right time because I know I don't know if you noticed this with yours, but there's certain times of the day where they're all really lit up and you can see all the colors on them, and then there's certain times where it's like they're just silver fish, <laughs> and you're wondering what happened to my rainbows. Um, yeah, these. But, the, the, I'm sorry to cut you off. These, I, I think, know. they seem to pretty much. I don't know. They always tend to have okay color now. Um, when I first got them, they were a little smaller, so maybe it was less. But now, during the middle of the day, they they usually look pretty good. I think. Yeah, I know a lot of fish when the lights first come on, mm -hmm. um, their their colors will intensify, and um, yeah. and that that's where you go. Oh, I get it now. I understand why people like rainbow fish. Um, yeah. The only thing I, that I've always kind of never understood is that transformation they go through when they become full mature fish mm -hmm. because they have like this little shrunken head, this real fat middle body, and this real small tail at the end. <laughs> so they yeah. look kind of weird. <laughs> I think that look might be one of the reasons I wasn't as into them before. I saw these, like I said, when they were smaller. I just thought they look good, so you know, I'll, I'll try them out. They seem like they're working with everybody in here, so yeah, they're they're gonna be fine. They're not they're not gonna predate them unless you have like the guppy fry or maybe some platy fry. But it's probably a good thing because it'll help keep your population in check too. You won't have these explosions of of fish in the aquarium. Yeah, one of the first fish I put in here was the guppies. And, you know, this is before I had anything like the Congo tetra and the rainbow fish. And yeah, I definitely saw a lot of babies going around. But uh, actually, when I added the Congo Tetra, that's that's when that ended. <laughs> so now um, I, I don't know if there's any in here that are just hiding well enough that I don't really see them. Uh, but no, you don't see many babies now. Yeah, they yeah they would they would need with the amount of fish and the fish you're keeping in there, they would need a, a lot of uh, yeah. surface cover because yeah. uh, when they're fried, they like to hang out at the very top. And uh, <laughs> but you know that that. Uh, that's really neat because it then it still allows you to keep the nice guppies that you'd like to see without having to ever worry about um, having way too many fish because that, that quickly happens when you just don't have any predators that'll keep um, the species in check. So, and yeah, it also saves you on food more... too. <laughs> oh, sorry. What was that? No, I said it. It also saves you a little bit on food, on feeding. <laughs> oh, right, right. A little free life feeding. I'm sure with them and the, uh, the platies as well. Yeah, no, I, I was reading a comment here uh, from Geek Boy. He says he hates the, the adult rainbow body shape also. Yeah, Precox is like the neon rainbow fish. And the, the Basmani or Bozmani are the ones that I noticed that don't necessarily get that weird. But there's a smaller rainbow species. And uh, those are really neat. I've kept both of those. And uh, I still have, I think, a, a pair of the neons in there that have, that have just... That I've should be pulling them out and trying to breed them, but I just don't have time right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, I definitely like how the Bozeman eye look as well. They're real pretty fish. Yeah, that orange and blue. Yeah, and, yeah. And those are ones that you – I know they're always – they constantly have the colors, but I noticed it when in mine, especially when oh, an outcome in here first thing in the morning, mm -hmm. that blue and that orange is a lot more intense. It almost seems like they're glowing. It's it's really weird. And then as the day progressed, it would kind of it would lose that that intensity, but you could still see the the nice colors in them. And then towards the afternoon, sometimes they would just kind of especially when I would feed the tank, they'd get all excited and and flare up again. But yeah, they're there's a few of the rainbow fish. I like more of the smaller fish, like the thread fin mm -hmm. um, rainbow fish. Those are really neat. But uh, again, I'm more partial to the smaller fish than any any of the larger fish. It's most of the stuff that I keep in here, mm -hmm. the largest thing that I have now is probably the angel fish. Um, oh, and okay. So anything about that size and smaller is usually where I like to hang out. Yeah, like I said before, I was never really into the the monster fish, you know, anything bigger than that as well. Um, yeah, I definitely notice in the mornings when the lights are first coming on, they, they do look good. Uh, I definitely see it with the Congo Tetras. You know, that's when they have their whole breeding behavior and everything going on usually in the mornings. I know I was watching that right before we had this live stream. Mm -hmm. um, the investment that went behind it. 
do you i mean obviously it, it's money that you felt was really well invested right yeah, yeah, I don't regret it. Like you said, it was like eight thousand dollars for everything: the tank, the stand, canopy, uh, the substrate, the uh, hardscape, everything. It was, you know, somewhere around there. I have it, you know, the exact amount in that video. Uh, but yeah, I, I've been enjoying it. It just had to be a, a gift to myself for that year. Nice. Now, what, where, what part of the country are you in? I'm in Central Florida. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So. You don't have to deal with the with the extreme cold to try to make sure that stays warm. I mean, it's pretty much ambient temperature and you're good. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, just, you know, the air conditioning and ambient temperature is usually enough. Um, I don't hold up well in the cold either, so. <laughs> uh, you know what? Uh, yeah, I, I, I think I have to be on there with you because I have lived where where it's extreme. Well, not extremely cold because it's all relative, but, it you know, where it freezes. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, I find that I can work through the heat. I can actually do stuff. You just, you know, do it a little bit slower and you're a little bit smarter about it. We're in the cold, you know, you go around, walking around just banging your hand against a yeah. hard surface. And it's like, oh man, <laughs> forget about trying to turn wrenches during the cold. I tried changing a fan belt once and the damn wrench slipped and I hit the damn engine block. Oh, I said, nope. Oh. I quit. I waited till it got a little bit warmer, but and and it was in it was not where it was probably what in in the mid thirties when I was doing that, and it sucked. <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna get much mid thirties here. You know, I've seen few. Uh, I've seen snow only a few times in my life. It, I feel like it's good for visiting for me, but I, I don't need to live there. <laughs> yeah, that's what I. That's what our experience was. Snow was enjoyable for all of three days and that was yeah it. <laughs> yeah yeah because it was we had never been anywhere it snowed we had never seen it snowed and we had never had a white christmas and all that lasted uh all that enjoyment was done like in three days and then it was like we're done i don't want to see snow ever again <laughs> yeah the cold is no joke uh, but um and it's a whole different i i know i've told that story a whole bunch of times but there's a there's a whole different learning curve in how you operate and how you move around in, in snow. I had a lot of, inc well, not a lot, but one incident uh, where I didn't understand why people shovel snow. And then I learned the hard way that you make turn it into ice if you keep running over it. There was that. And then one of the scarier ones um, was trying to uh, driving on ice. I had never really done that. And, um, I remember coming up to a to a stop sign on a street that was kind of in an incline. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering why no cars were parking on that curb of that street. And um, you know, I was I was driving, I had I didn't feel like I was losing any traction, come up to the stop sign, make the stop, and all of a sudden I feel my truck just kind of slide all the way until it hit the curb. And then I was like, Oh, that's why nobody parks here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then and I, I just had a I had to rub the the rims all along the curb until I got off, but yeah, that was that was one of the scariest moments in my life. Yeah, I would have no idea how to operate. That'd be you know, I was born and raised in Florida. It'd be completely new for me. I well, think I've heard I'm, you talk about the driveway before. Is that? Oh, or you didn't you realize your water was on, and you came back, and it was water all down the street. Yeah, that, that was. Those were all things. You see, I I grew up in Southern California all my life. Uh, it just so happened that uh, I had I was at the time I was employed for for the Bureau of Land Management, and they had an opening in uh, Winnemucca, Nevada, which you know it's like the far region of as far north as you can probably get to Nevada before you hit the the Idaho border, and um, you know we didn't know anything, so we went up there and looked at it. Obviously, they took us up there during the spring when it was beautiful, <laughs> right. and. Uh, my wife and I kind of looked at each other and said, all right, well, this will be a nice change. The temperature was nice. And uh, so we, I ended up taking the position up there, but yeah, that, that first winter was all, you know, an experience to say the least, but uh, you figure it out pretty quick. You have to, or else you don't, you don't make it. <laughs> yeah. I guess living in the cold is its own lifestyle. So yeah, I, I didn't really care for it. Um, you know, I'll, as, as people think that we're crazy, because now I live in, in Arizona, mm -hmm. as hot as it gets here, I think I'd rather deal with that than than dealing with the cold up there. Um, like I said, there's just, 
you know, I, I guess I grew up around the heat that I've learned how to deal with it. Mm-hmm. And uh, like I said, it doesn't stop me from doing anything. You just, you just figure it out. You know, you don't, you don't go out there in the middle of the day when it's, you know, one fourteen, and, and try to dig a hole in the yard. You know, you get up at four in the morning, you work mm-hmm. all the way up to about seven thirty eight o'clock and you're done. You know, you go back inside, wait for the sun to go down and finish off whatever you're doing. So it's just, you do things a little bit different, but I, it's never been to where it's so hot I can't do anything, you know. And, and I've been where it's so cold that all you can do there is sit and shiver. And you just can't move. So I'll take the heat. Yeah, I'll take the heat any day. I, I don't have much 114 around here either, though. Uh, I think, you know, the heat might be kind of the reason they don't do the daylight savings time. I Googled it when I saw it happen. I think it's yeah, I've always wondered. work earlier in the morning or something. Yeah, well, if the sun not being up is a good thing down here. Yeah. Whereas I guess uh, for farmers, it's not a good thing because they can't see what they're doing or the yeah. livestock's asleep or whatever the case is. But down here, yeah, you want to get out as early as possible and, and get much of that work done and avoid the the desert heat. Right now, you see, the problem is we have, I think it's a good thing that we have short-term memory mm-hmm. because the summer, the summer can be anywhere between four to five, five, six-ish months, you know, depending on the year. Yeah. And it every time it rolls around, we're hating life. But as soon as the summer is gone, everything's great. So we we have this, we, this, this psychological game that we play with ourselves where the winter and, and the spring are awesome. You know, you can do anything. And, um, and then you, you have this memory where you forget how bad the summer is. The summer gets. <laughs> and, uh, and so, you know, you're all like, oh, this is not that bad. And then summer rolls around and is like, what am I doing here? But then winter comes around and you forget all about it again. But uh, as a hobbyist, it's not bad. It, there's, um, if you kept your, your aquariums indoors, I wouldn't run heaters on any of my aquariums because the temperatures will range within the parameters that are required for these fish. Uh, for me, though, keeping them in the garage, even though I have a insulated garage, it still gets real warm. Mm-hmm. It gets it can get up to about 100 degrees in here. And then for some reason, I don't know if that's an Arizona thing for building coats, excuse me, but they didn't have any vents. All, um, uh, all the garages I've ever been in California have like these vents on the bottom of the, of the garage. Mm-hmm. And I think for more for than anything else is so that people quit leaving their cars running and sitting on them and off themselves. Uh, but they don't have that here. So it kind of builds up the heat a little bit more. So, uh, you know, I got to figure out things to do. I think eventually I'm going to have to get one of those um, split units, the air conditioning split units and set it up in the garage. And um, then I'll be, then I'll be golden. I'll be able to keep some of the species that I really want to keep. So have you had that be a problem for the fish uh, before? The temperature, yes. I, I I had a I erroneously invested money on a I guess evaporative cooler instead of getting myself a portable AC. I think I would have been better with the with the portable AC. Okay. Um, the evaporative cooler worked great all from May till mid August, and then mid August here for us is like what they call the monsoon season. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of humidity. And once the humidity hit, that swamp cooler was not doing, it wasn't cooling anything. You know, there's just too much moisture in the air and, it, and the temperature just, I don't know, it just seems to get hotter. When it's dry heat, yeah, it works. It'll, it'll keep it in here about 80 degrees. Oh, okay. That's so not it's bad. not bad. For yeah, it's fish, not- it's not bad. I guess that's one of the good reasons, you know, I'm happy I'm able to keep the tank inside the house so I can control the temperature. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Now, going back to your your channel, because uh, one of the things that I found it really interesting is, I know, and I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that you have been very straightforward and has shared not only your successes but the you know the stuff that that yeah. has gone wrong. Um, I remember the, one of the very first videos is when you were escaping that aquarium and you put that big log for mm-hmm. the for the escape. And not realizing that you needed to, that it needed to be waterlogged, and you come back and that thing had floated up and destroyed everything it was doing yeah. in there. Yeah, I knew you know, it would wanna I, I knew it would wanna float. 
Uh, I put a rock on top of it, but I underestimated how much weight it was going to take to keep that thing down. So the tank is filling up all of a sudden. The uh, I just hear something roll off of something. And I look and the wood is just floating in there. And that rock, I would have been freaking out thinking that rock would have cracked the bottom of that aquarium and there goes all that water. Because yeah, I'm assuming it was a pretty heavy rock. Was yeah, yeah. It was a pretty heavy rock, but I, it was, ended up being okay. I guess it fell on enough sand to where you know it was fine. It, it distributed that weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and then, um, well, one of the other things that I that I that I saw, and especially on this last video where you're breaking it down, because I was like, oh, he, he did the same thing that I do. It was using the rock yards for your hardscape. Mm -hmm. Where did you get that from? Where where did you find out about using that? Because most people would have gone to a pet store, and um, and paid out the wazoo to, to escape that aquarium because it's a big aquarium. Did you? Yeah. Is that something you already knew about? So <laughs> I saw the prices that they charge in pet stores, and I knew that wasn't going to happen. So I tried to figure out how I was going to get them. Uh, I just looked up places that were selling. I think originally what I looked up was Dragonstone. Uh, but I went to the uh, I went to a rock yard that said they had Dragonstone. I saw this there as well, which they called a uh, zebra stone. Uh, it looked nice, you know. I thought it would do fine in the tank, so I went ahead and added in. Same thing with the wood. I know, you know, the big pieces of driftwood can get real expensive as well. So I actually got that from somebody off offer up that you know pulls it out of a lake behind our house. So, so that was already waterlogged and everything, or it had already dried out. It had dried out. It had dried out by so I started getting stuff together before I actually set up the tank. So by okay. the time I actually set up the tank, it had dried out and needed to be waterlogged again. Okay. So you did you already know you were getting that four hundred or or did you go in thinking I'm gonna get something smaller and then, then walking up with you know <laughs> with something bigger? I wanted something even bigger than this. <laughs> Uh, it would have been, it would have been five. What was it? Five hundred and thirty, five hundred forty, somewhere around there. Uh, but the wife did talk me back from that. Yeah, it would have stuck out a lot more into the room. You know, th this fits the area well. So. Now, is there is there an end to your channel that you're going? Okay, I'm done recording here. Or is this something you want to continue to do? What's what's your future plans for for your channel? No, I plan to keep doing it as long as, you know, I have the tank. I would continue just showing what I'm doing with it. I found it to be fun, you know, sharing it online, you know, going back and forth with people speaking. You know, everybody. Oh, I dropped you there for a second. I don't know if that was yeah, me or. Flash for a moment. Oh, wait. No, that's not. I was going to say, did I get a call? But I'm not using my cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But no, no, I was saying I would keep going. I would keep going with the videos. Oh, nice. It, um, yeah, the reason I'll ask is because I know that all your content has pretty much come from that one aquarium. So that's why I was wondering if, if it was a project that you were working on where it's like, all right, after so many so many years, I'll call it complete and, and that's it or or what you were planning to do. But, that you know, like I said, one of the, the, the most enjoyable things is watching, you know, your, your evolution as the yeah. channel channel's name is that but um you know that's why i was curious if if, if you were going to continue to do stuff with it or or you're going to change it or come up with a new project or something yeah yeah I, I didn't go into it with any end in sight you know as long as i'm having fun with it how it is now i'll, I'll keep changing things you know trying different things i'll keep making the videos i imagine at some point i would probably you know redo everything and do some things differently so yeah now one of the things I don't know how aware you are, but there's a pretty big community within within uh, you know the fish keeping here on YouTube, mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of cool because you get to see other channels and you get to learn from some other people's experiences and stuff like that. Um, the reason I ask is because I know a lot of people do live streams and stuff like that, and I, I don't I don't I think I've only seen your name pop up a couple of times on some of those live streams. And, um, you know, we're in the chat and stuff like that. Are you, I'm assuming you're like extremely busy and you're not like the rest of us that have a lot of time to waste. <laughs> yeah, it gets hard to watch them live a lot of times. I will, you know, watch them when I have some time. I'll watch them. Um, I'll watch them later. Yeah. So, you know, it, I w one of the things is also because the reason I was mentioning that is um, once you start 
following uh, watching some of these things it also helps kind of put your channel out there and and it gets you a little bit more subscribers and and and, and things like that um i don't know if that's a goal for you to try to reach a certain number of subscribers i know some people it's like uh they set they set themselves a goal or they want to i know some people have the goal that they want to do this full time some people just like me do it because it gives me the opportunity to interact with other hobbyists um you know everybody has a different a different um objective so i guess the question is what's your what's your the reasoning or your goal with your channel so it started with i i just wanted to share it i want you know <laughs> i probably learn as much from the comments like we were spoken about you were talking about the quarantine or other things you've mentioned in the comments i think i learned as much as the comments <laughs> as they probably you know anybody would learn from watching the videos like i said it's mostly just documenting the journey for me um, I do want to, I do plan to, I want to be more interactive with other people's live streams. If I could get to them live, you know, try to make time for it because the community is definitely great. Yeah. Do you have any ambitions of doing live streams in the future? Uh, I wouldn't mind it. I would have to think what I would do. I, I don't know how good I am at just sitting there rambling for a long time, <laughs> but uh, I usually would have things that planned out like I do with my videos. I, I know what's going to be and I know what I'm doing. I would have to see how I would do it, but it's something I wouldn't cut out. I'd be interested in it. Well, and that, that's I'm glad you touched on that because one of the things that that I noticed is uh, unlike me, my, mine is shooting from the hip, no plans, uh, no editing, uh, none of that stuff. Because I uh, I've tried editing stuff and I just can't sit there. For one thing, I can't watch I can't stop watching myself on camera. <laughs> and then the other thing is, um, you know, trying to sit there and. And, and clip out little things in there. And it, for me, I'm too impatient. So mm -hmm. I started out trying to do that. And now I, I started doing some of the videos like that. I know I got a lot of advice from different friends um, to do like a, like a bullet point. So you stay on task and all that stuff. And mm -hmm. that quickly went out the window. Um, I, I tried it, but that's not the way my, my mind works. <laughs> and uh, so I just kind of shoot from the hip. Uh, if I'm working on something, I'll, I'll share that with people. But that's kind of like the way I've done things. But yours seem more structured. Even from day one, I really enjoyed it because everything seems to be thought out. You're very clear and concise as to what you're trying to explain that you're doing. Because um, it's like the total opposite of what I do. So I, you, uh, Fathom Aquatics, is another guy that does the same type of stuff. So did you already have some experience with dealing, hey, Garcia, did you already have some experience recording and editing, or is this learning on the fly? None at all. I learned everything on the fly. I, mean, I used the program that just came on my you know, MacBook computer to do all the videos. I shoot everything just right off of my phone uh, and upload it. But I do actually, I enjoy the editing process, but you're right, it does take up a lot of time. That's the main thing. I would like to learn, you know, to get better at it. Like I said, I enjoy you know, spending time doing it, but you have to dedicate time to doing it. Yeah. And uh, because one of the things that I also noticed, is, and, and I guess that's why some people, I don't understand how people manage to put out like a video every week. Um, yeah. Because just the time to edit that, that, that would almost to me would be like, you're doing that at least eight hours out of your day trying to trying to edit and put stuff together. Um, but I guess it also makes sense for your channel, especially with the title, to space them out because there's only so much that's happening in between. Is it like a month? Are you, are you releasing a video every month or is it like every two weeks? It's really whenever it's ready. <laughs> I started out at the beginning. You know, I was getting them every week. Uh, but as you get busy and everything, sometimes I'm able to do less. Sometimes I'm able to do more. I know the space between the last video I just released with the betta fish. Uh, I think that probably was about a month since I released the one before that. And with the editing too, you know, I've noticed I could have 20, almost 30 minutes of video. I'll cut it down and it'll be four minutes <laughs> that I actually end up using after everything. That's why with the last video, I actually released a, a second like bonus video almost where I just like, Hey, I'll just release all the footage. It didn't make it into the main video, but why it's either that or just waste the footage. So. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, and like I said, that's, it kind of, it's understandable because it's only one aquarium and yeah. you know, things only things happen at a certain time. So 
even if you wanted to create content, it's kind of difficult because you got to wait for, like, for example, you plant a, a, a little stem plant. Well, it's going to take it a two or three weeks before you can visibly notice a difference, how right. much taller right. it is. So there's those things. Now, it's t talking about that, how are you enjoying the plants? Because I know that was, I think, something that you mentioned that was kind of new for you to, to, to go in that direction and doing a planted aquarium. So, like I said before, when I had the little corner tank, I had a couple of plants in there, but it was just like some crypts, uh, maybe a java fern or something. Starting to do all these different plants, all, you know, the, the carpet I was trying to do in here and everything, that was definitely new to me. But I always knew, like, I always watched the YouTube videos, you know, people doing the um, community tanks, planet tanks. Mm -hmm. I was always interested in this. This gave me the chance to do a lot of them, so. Have you, have you... In the time that you've been doing this, have you found these plants I really enjoy because I can grow them like weeds? And then there's the ones that's like, God, why can't I get this right? You know, it just keeps dying and dying and dying on you. Have you have you come across that, or, or they have all worked out for you? Uh, the, some definitely do better than others. Um, I think I heard you mention before that it's it's possible that keeping certain plants next to each other, uh, they're kind of battling a little bit for you know what gets to grow. Uh, like right here, I have Ludwigia. Well, this is Ovalis. That one always has grown very well in here. But on the other side of the rockets in front of, I have some Ludwigia Mini Super Red. It did well before, but now it's it it's not growing as well as it used to. You know, it is a deep tank. I'm still doing a lot of things like balancing light, uh, figuring out how long I want the lights to be on and everything. So I'm trying to figure that. I don't know. I did recently mix a bunch of different plants with it, though. So I don't know if that could play a part with it. I, I don't know. I'm still learning a lot. Hmm. Now, are you are you adding fertilizers to that aquarium or is it just the, 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 the nutrient substrate that you put in there? So no, the Black Diamond Blasting Sand, I don't, I don't believe has any nutrients in it. So what I use... Oh, I thought you had to use some aqua soil when you were setting it up. I could have sworn. Huh? Maybe I was wrong. No, if I had it to do again, I probably would have mixed something in it, but I've been using root tabs and I do have flourish that I want. Oh, that's right. That was the video where you were they kept floating up on you. You were using the the aquarium co-op ones, right? I did have some of those. I didn't have those float on me much. I don't I don't think it was those, but I had some I got off Amazon that have the little, I don't know if it's Osmocote balls or whatever it is. Uh, but eventually all the little yellow balls that were in them would just end up on top of the substrate and it's black sand so that they just stick out. <laughs> now, do you have any fish that are moving down the substrate? Do you have quarries or anything like that that are? I have some, yeah, I do have corridors. Yeah, yeah, oh. corridors is probably the main ones that would do that. You know, I guess the, maybe hill string loaches run around on top of it, but yeah, no, they, they, the corridor. they won't disturb the substrate as much, but I'm trying to think which of the, Maybe the peacock gudgeons. I don't know if they, they dig out nests or not in the substrate. No, I haven't seen them. The main thing that's probably moving through the substrate is the, the Malaysian trumpet snails, though. I have a yeah. bunch of them. That'll do it. That'll yeah. do it. Because they get far down there enough where on their way up, they just gradually start bringing them up. They're yeah. great. They're great for keeping your, your aquarium's uh, substrate uh, relatively clean because the same thing – what they bring up, they take right down with them as far as the mome and all that stuff that's in that in that aquarium. Um, now, I don't think I've seen a video on that, but what is your maintenance like in there? Are you are you doing any gravel vacs or are you just doing strictly water changes? The gravel vac I'll do sometimes. I do have a python, but generally now it's just the the uh, water changes right now. And I'll you know I'll clean out the filters. So that's yeah. the main things. Yeah, I, I, I quit kind of doing gravel vac so a while back. Um, I don't mind I don't mind that mold, especially because you like you said you had that in, inert substrate. Eventually that'll work its way into the, yeah. the gravel. Good thing in yours is black. So you well actually it looks brownish, I guess. The layers if you look at the, the front of the glass, you'll start yeah. seeing lasagna layers and you can see the mold working its way into the bottom of those uh, of that substrate because of the Malaysian trumpet snails. And it gets to your roots, so you know I. That's why I quit. I quit, um, you know, gravel vacuum because I use I use that as my um, enrichment for that uh, inert substrate. Yeah, yeah, and it takes a lot of time, and you suck out some of the sand when you do it. Sometimes 
a little bit of mom, a little bit of algae. It doesn't really bother me that much. And like you said, it'll work its way down into the substrate and you know, ends up helping out. So, did did you manage to get the the carpet on there, or is it just areas that that um, the plants were able to carpet, or it's just probably too big to to. So yeah, there's not a carpet throughout the whole thing yet. I went through a few different things like that. Well, with that. The first carpeting plant I ever put in there was Crypt Parva, which I just like the small plants back then. You know, I, the whole thing with big tank, small things in it. Uh, <laughs> I realized just how slowly that grows, though. I thought, oh, yeah. wait, no, no problem. But it took forever. The next one I put in there was Lucens, the Crypt Lucens. It's a little bigger. I liked how it looked. It's still pretty slow. Uh, then I put just a little bit of, what, dwarf four-leaf clover in there. There's just oh, okay. a plant I liked. I saw it around, but now I have the dwarf sage in there. Yeah, and that's done the most of the carpeting, so that's already yep. outpaced everything else. Well, what's not what's nice about that once it starts really going through there, mm -hmm. that mulm will work itself below it, and you won't see it anymore. Yeah, um, yeah, I've definitely you know. noticed it hides a lot of things. Yeah. And uh, and the only reason I know that it does that is because I have a ten gallon aquarium with that stuff in there, and I usually that's kind of like my grow out for other aquariums. Every time I go to pull in there, I go wow. That was that much moam in here, and the only livestock in there are shrimp, snails, and now I have some uh, uh, pseudomagills, uh, mm -hmm. the the furcata, the ones uh, that are yellow with the little pom poms. So I don't have a big bio load in there, and yet I am surprised how much moam is in there when I pull the when I pull plants out to to replant another aquarium. So. Yeah, they do a really good job of of hiding all that stuff. They it gets worked out and in, down into the bottom of that, and then it starts going into the roots. So. Yeah, and I, and I like how it looks. It's really just like a grass in there. So. Mm -hmm. Yep, and I, I I at least with mine, I've noticed that the height on it is is enough where I don't even have to mess with it or trim it or do anything. It's just you know like a little literally like a like a lawn. It looks like a lawn. Yeah. Yeah, one of my main things when I was, you know, picking out what plants I was going to put in here and um, and especially with the, if I was going to do anything carpeting, why I tried to parve and stuff like, well, I don't want anything that's going to grow big and I'm having to go in here all the time and having to clip <laughs> clip grass pretty much in the tank. So I wanted something that wasn't going to get too long. Uh, that's why I was trying the smaller plants at first, but the dwarf sage has been doing good. I don't think it's too tall. I also did, wanted to make sure I didn't put anything in here that was going to, you know, block too much view, especially if it's something like a carpeting plant that's going to be everywhere. Because I like to be able to see the fish. I want to be able to see, you know, my little crawfish I have. And I want them to disappear into it and I never see them again. Uh, so, yeah, that, that all went into that choice. Oh, okay. Did you have the crawfish when you were using those uh, root tabs? Uh, no, they were added after. Okay. Because th those guys will dig. Especially if yeah. you have rocks. If you have rocks, they'll dig under those rocks and make their little nest under there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've seen them do a little bit of that. I think it was probably the, I think the Malaysian trump and snails are probably uncovering a lot of those as well. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, would you mind showing us your aquarium? Sure, no problem. One second. All right. Was there anything specific you wanted to see? Let me try. No, no, no. Just giving you an opportunity to show off your. Your work. <laughs> oh, no, no problem. So um, let me kind of angle this so I can see what I'm showing here. Uh, like I said, black diamond blasting sand is a substrate I have here. You can see red tiger lotus. Um, I have a sword back here. I forget which one it even is. Uh, the rainbow fish, they seem to look good to me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, the albino millennium and the goiter river. A uh, couple of guppies around here. One thing is I know I have more males than females right now, so I think they probably bugged them a little much. <laughs> uh, rainbow shark right here. Uh, hill stream loach. There's another one of the rainbow sharks. Uh, I have plants popping up places now. I'm not even sure what they are. I guess that might be another lutea. Yeah, they're crips. They're, yeah, they're, yeah, the ones they're, in the front are, but there's a little one in the back. Yeah, uh, they're runners. So okay. The crips will send runners, and they start growing mm -hmm. up in other areas. Okay. Then I have some, ooh, what is the name of this plant? A Pagan or something? Uh, the long, I forgot the name. <laughs> but then I have a Madagascar lace plant here. 
Uh, I probably need to get some more nutrients or something to it. It's still small, not doing that well. Oh, am I pointing this right? Hold on. Okay, then I have a plant I hadn't seen before. Uh, this one is called a Mexican oak leaf, I think. Okay, yeah, I've heard yeah. of it. Yeah, I hadn't seen it before, but I just figured I'd try it out. That recently just got put in here. A uh, couple more. I have the dwarf aquarium lily, more yes. lotuses. You know, you can see all the different <laughs> the uh, carpeting plants mixing together now. Uh, Those go. lilies, have you noticed the, the leaves trying to work themselves all the way to the top? Yes, I've seen that. I've been cutting them because I've noticed once they go to the top, it seems like a lot of them like to go to the top. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I've been kind of, I don't know if, maybe you know, if like, will any of them grow underwater again after that or do, does everything just go to the top? Um, I don't know. I've heard that once they get to the top, they don't, they'll lose all the bottom leaves. So I've always kept mine. I always trim them as soon as I see a runner going up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I've managed exactly. to keep it all low like you have it. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I've been trying to do is, you know, spreading on its own a little bit too, I guess. You know, there's another one that popped up over here that I didn't put there. <laughs> um, let's go around here. Another thing I wanted to make sure, you know, with the scape and everything, I could see the tank from both sides. Yeah, I was going to say that. That was intentional then to be able to yeah, look yeah, at it. Yeah, because with this area, it has a little cutout, so I wanted to make sure I could I could see it from here too. Uh, you might be able to see if I could aim this right. One of the we have one of the Oops. crawfish right there. The dwarf crawfish. There he is. Yeah, going around. Uh, Crips here. It's a mix of the bronze, red, and brown. I can't tell any difference between them. You know, it might just be I don't have enough light in here too. That's one thing. Um, Lush and Salty Aquariums, who I know you're going to have soon, he was telling me about, you know, possibly having a crypt carpet in the tank. Uh, it's something, yeah. um, it's interesting. Uh, then I have some Vesuvius sword. Yeah. Uh, you can see one of the corridor here. But yeah, that's pretty much it. A few more plants over here. And I have this spot, this uh, bamboo shrimp loves to hang out. If I'm hanging out <laughs> correctly. Yeah, it's He's right up the outlet, there. right? So, yeah. Yeah, he's that's how he's feeding. So yeah. But yeah, that's the tank. Now, are you planning to add more plants or are you are you leaving it like that so that your trimmings have places to go? So if if I run into something I like, I'll add it. I'll have no problem doing it. Oh, okay. That. Yeah. It just depends on, you know, just me running into things I want to add and figure out what I like. Yeah, and, you, and obviously the trimmings, you're replanting them, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm replanting them. Uh, some of the plants get to the top a lot faster. I'll trim them and replant them. They go back in here. Looks good. It's real crystal, crystal clear water. Oh, thank you. Well, yeah, it's been doing pretty well. I've been having a lot of fun with it. Yeah, it's... it's <laughs> I like how you set it up like a peninsula so that yeah, you can enjoy yeah. it from all, all sides and aspects of it. So now what do you got in that little breeder box up there? So that was for the glow light Daniels. I wanted to get a bigger school of them. I, I don't know how well you can see inside of them, but you can see the adults are on this side here. Uh, they were not fun to catch <laughs> in this big tank. They had too many places to hide. It, it took me a while to get this many. At first, I think I could only get my hands on like six of them. Uh, but I'm going to put them in a separate 10-gallon tank, leave them there for a few days to see if they breed, and um, I'll take it from there. I do have, you know, three babies that they had before. I know you're not going to be able to see those, but they're in the one over here on the oh, left okay. side. Yeah. But, yeah, that's and what I'm doing they, for those. They had, they had them in there, the babies, or...? Oh, no, no, no. I was just holding them in here while I had okay. the babies. Like, I just took them out and put them in here. So if I needed to go for another round of breeding, I wasn't going to have to catch them all again. If that makes sense. So, yeah. Because it, it was taking too long to catch them in the first place. So I didn't want to just let them loose in the whole tank. But they'll be going back in that 10 gallon soon. Yeah. And, uh, they were asking, um, no, they, they were pointing out that that plant you were. Mentioning could either be a, a crypt balance or a balance. That's exactly what it is. Balance. Okay. And then also um, they're asking what kind of filtration you're using in your aquarium. So I have two FX sixes. Uh, that's what I've been using. You can see okay. one of the outlets here, one on each side. I went with a canister filter because I, so I always thought sumps were cool, especially the customizability of them. Um, 
I just haven't used one before. I don't, I'm not sure how quiet they can be, but with the canister filters, I, I don't hear much from them at all. And I knew I could keep those quiet. So I didn't want a bunch of, you know, running water sounds in the living room 24 seven. Well, it looks really good. No, oh, thank you. How do you, how have you managed not to have duckweed? That's what I want to know. <laughs> That's one thing I'm very happy about as well. Uh, whenever I get new plants, I always check them. I've definitely found it, you know, coming from the store. But somehow I've managed to keep it out of here. I know if it gets in here, it's, it's probably not get, coming back out. As far as the floating plants, actually, let me see if I can open this. Are, are you using tissue cultures or are you actually using like regular plants from the aquarium? I mean, from the fish store. These are regular plants from the fish store, most of them. Yeah. Uh, I think the... Um, some of the Busa Philandra might have come from PetSmart or Pet Supermarket. I don't know if that was originally tissue cultured or how they got that. I just bought it, you know, it was in a little bag. Uh, with yeah, I was going to say, if it there. comes in yeah. the little cups with that gel on the bottom, those are usually tissue culture. that they've, they've been grown where they're not exposed to any of the, the snails or anything like that. Yeah, but that's that was only for the the boost of flanger. Everything else came from the local fish store. I just somehow kept the duckweed away. Then you know, above here I have I don't know if you saw I've had I was growing strawberries. Out of yeah. There. Um, <laughs> I did a water change. I didn't take the strawberry plants out and put the. I guess I let the roots get too dry, pretty much. So I, they oh. pretty much died off a lot. So I'm you know starting again from that. Then I have some coleus plants that are here you know i'll let them regrow i just cut them back because they were getting real big blocking light uh but yeah so that's all above and then for the floating plants you have to let me know if you can't see because i can't no see. no I, i'm seeing yeah okay so i have um mostly red root floater and salvinia in here mm -hmm. i recently added some frog bit just to try something a little larger but yeah they've been doing pretty well nice Yeah, yeah. So everybody in here doing pretty well. Now, are you planning on adding more of the the plants above the aquarium, or or is those just what you have there? Is that it? I would definitely be down to add more. I would just have to see what I like. A lot of things just end up being if I run into something, I'll see if it it looks like it should work out, and then I'll give it a try. <laughs> That's okay. how most of it happens. I'm always open <laughs> to suggestions from people. You know, if anybody ever comments on a video, oh, you should try this. I definitely look it up. Yeah, uh, everybody uses have right now. Most people will go with uh, pothos is a very good plant that will oh, easy yeah. to grow. Yeah. I do have uh, a little over here. Um, yeah. Oh, there you go. And I stole most of these from my mom. So <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's usually the way it works out. You either yeah. trim them from somebody, some friend or somebody, or, <laughs> or you walk by a store, you take a little, a little, a little trimming. Right, um, right. But, yeah, that one, I know peace lilies do pretty good. Um there's a, there's a couple of good channels on YouTube that are, I know there's a lot of plant channels, but there's a, mm -hmm. I think I've come across like three or four that are, that are, they're aquarium related, but they talk a lot about plants that you can keep. I always forget this guy's channel name. I hate it because it's something like plants, plants, life or something, but he, he does a lot of the, the, plants growing out of the aquarium and he's got a he's got tons of videos of species that do well which ones he's tried to have it um it's a really informative channel when it comes to that oh if to i the could find that, i definitely will check that out I'd, I'd love to see that i'll send you the link once we we get done of that channel okay. unless somebody i i always butcher that guy's name um but that's really that's really what he does is um a lot of that stuff is um, okay, yeah, has a lot yeah. of those um, plants growing out the top, and they look neat. And so he's got a couple of them where the the roots have grown all the way down from the top into his substrate. So you have these long vines that are going into the, from the top to the bottom. But, oh, I think that would definitely be cool to do. Uh, the but, only thing I don't like is just if it block. It looks like it's blocking too much light from below. But that's why I, in the end I'll probably end up uh, using a lot of those plants that I stick out in the corners of the tank just so it's not blocking too much light in the middle. Yeah. Well, a little bit of, a little bit of uh, shade is not bad either. It also helps yeah. the fish give them a, a place where they can kind of hide out. So, 
it's you know but yeah you got to be sure that where you have it over it's not anything that um that is going to be an issue yeah yeah but no i'll check that out thank you for suggesting that yeah no problem go ahead and close this top But no, I've definitely been having a lot of fun with the tank, so. So besides the fish keeping, do you have any other hobbies that, that you dabble in? That's the main thing I'm probably doing to keep myself busy right now. Uh, <laughs> you know, I enjoy watching a good movie, you know, play some video games, different things. So, but that's that's mainly the... the yeah, that, that's the, the main thing. <laughs> Oh, I like playing around nice. with it. Nice. Well, you got you got a lot of real estate to play with there. Yeah, yeah. Now, how do you manage to when you got to go in there and trim stuff? I mean, I imagine you your half of your body is probably going in over the top. <laughs> <laughs> yes, luckily. So for me to clean the inside of the tank, I'll usually use. I did a video on this before. Um, I have a magnetic algae scraper. I also like to use the melamine sponges. Okay. Uh, the magic eraser sponges. So I, you know, to do a real good clean, I'll go in there and use that. I have a little step ladder I'll use. Luckily, I don't have to go past the armpit when I'm doing that, though. My arm's just long enough. <laughs> yeah, no, I, that's the only problem with those 30 inch tall aquariums is just, um, especially when they're like the acrylic, you know, how they have that extra uh, frame on the top, the lip. The opening is probably about six inches away from the top. So by the time yeah. you get up there and you try to reach down there, well, your arm doesn't articulate in a way that will allow you to take advantage of it. So usually you lose about half of your arm legs trying to get down in there. Um, that's why I had to get an uh, algae scraper for that for that um, 150 that I have because I couldn't reach the bottom. I was able to scrape all the algae all the way up, maybe about uh, three, three quarters of the way. And I had a one quarter that was all just <laughs> algae because I couldn't get to the bottom of it. Yeah, yeah. I sometimes what I'll do is just lower the water a little bit too. I'll just do like a little water change at the same time just to kind of help so I'm not <laughs> so much submerged in the water. Yeah. Well, for me it was I don't care. I could have lowered it all the way to the bottom unless I got physically in there. I wasn't going to reach the bottom of that aquarium. <laughs> yeah, I do a lot of leaning over the tank to to get way in there. Yeah, but then again, mine's sitting up higher too, so even even in the step ladder that I had, I just couldn't get it to it. But mm -hmm. That was one of the reasons why I eventually ended up doing that, getting uh, getting one, buying the, one of those magnetic uh, scrapers. But yeah. for the life of me, I couldn't really find anything that was acrylic safe. Most of the stuff that they're selling you out there is for glass aquariums. So yeah, yeah, the one I got, they had different blades that go in it. I guess just for the acrylic tanks. Yeah, and you change them out every once in a while. Much more. No, oh, they're asking you a question here on the lace plant that you have. Mm -hmm. Do you did you submerge the bulb into the substrate or not? Uh, I think it's about halfway. I think I put it in there about halfway down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, sir, we've been at it this for almost an hour twenty. Um, oh, it's been anything that long else? Already? Yeah. Anything else you want to share with us or? Um. Did, I don't know if you're if somebody was able to drop your your channel link. Mm -hmm. If they haven't, I would appreciate it if somebody would give me a hand with that. Um, and um, it's called the the evolving tank. Uh, I, you're not on. Um, are you familiar with Fish Fan Link? No, I'm not. Okay. All right. Here's our here's our pitch for Fish Family. What's nice about this? It's it's actually something that was done by one of the community members, Matt, mm -hmm. and um, he set up this page where most of us that do content which would related to the hobby, mm -hmm. you can go in there and post. Uh, there's like a real simple form that you fill out uh, with your information on there, and anytime a video drops or you do a live stream, it'll send out a notification. And it, so it allows people to try to find your channel much easier uh, instead of waiting for the algorithm to try to find you. So for example, if you were there, I could go in there, find your link and share it with other people a lot easier right now. I guess if you do that, you would have to go to your page, copy your URL and then post it on here. But in there, you can just search by name because the problems like yours is easy to find. 
but there's some people that uh that have a little bit more of a, a either a regular name or or um, a generic name, mm -hmm. and it'll pop up with a bunch of other channels that are not necessarily related to uh, to the hobby. And so at this place at fishfanlink.com, you can find um, anybody that's like you. If you go in there and you post yourself on there, it'll allow you to 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 people to find you that much quicker if they're trying to see your find your channel and stuff like that. Oh, I'll definitely check that out. Let me write that down. Oh, thanks for letting me know about that. Yeah, hey QB passport, stay out of trouble from TJ. <laughs> There's a guy that I that I came across. I don't know how he came across my channel, but um, he uh, travels to different countries and mm -hmm. experiences the nightlife in those areas. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty cool. It's interesting. It's different. It's a lot different than than doing the fish stuff. But right, <laughs> it's, it's an interesting. Uh, I will interview you soon. Okay, that'll work. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, other than that. If um if you don't have anything else for me, I just wanted to say thank you, and uh, hopefully we can get you some subs out of this this um uh, this live stream. Is it this is the first time you actually in front of the camera, right? Uh yeah, I didn't put unless I'm in reflections probably from the take. I don't know, but no, I haven't done any in front of the camera videos, so this would be the first one. Now was that intentional or was that just just kind of warming up to the idea of it? Uh, probably a little warming up to the idea, but I don't I don't have a problem being on the camera. Uh, it's more so I I feel like people like the the fish video. I'll just fill the video with the fish. Well, there's, <laughs> there's the always a, there's always that element of intrigue, mm -hmm. you know, when you're watching those videos. And you know, you you make a lot of assumptions sometimes when uh, you're just watching the video and listening to somebody. Yeah. Like for example, I know you sound a lot younger than what I thought you you were. Uh, I was I was thinking you were like in your early late teens, you know, like 19, 18 age. But obviously, no, you're, you're, you're no, you're, not anymore. Yeah, we're but at thirty one. When now, you, so. yeah, well, even even at that, when the channel was probably started, what about a year, almost two years ago? Yeah, I would have never guessed you were in your early thirties, mm. <laughs> just by the sound of your voice. But uh, so you know, it's interesting once you. And it's kind of it's kind of cool though being able to put a face to the to to the name or in that effect to to the content. Yeah, maybe I'll try to work some of it in there. I just haven't had the chance yet. It probably it might also felt a little weird for me. Okay, I'm gonna have this you know script for my video, what I'm gonna talk about. And then I'm gonna have to record a separate video of me sitting down talking to the camera, going through everything. But I don't know, yeah. it's something I'll probably try at some point. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it like I said, it was just it was always curious. It was always intriguing when I would watch the videos. I wonder, it's like, wow, this. I I knew you were in the younger spectrum, and I say younger because most people at my age now are younger. <laughs> I'm in my fifties, so you know, I now I understand. I never got it when uh, when I was in my twenties or thirties, and you know, somebody that was my age now would say, "Hey, young man," is like. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm a full grown man. <laughs> All about but, perspective, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Once you get to that age, you, you understand why you call everybody a hey, young man, young man, because they are younger than you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but but no, I I really thought you were a lot younger, based mm -hmm. on the sound of your voice. But now that I've met you, and it's like, oh, okay, I really messed that one up. <laughs> <laughs> but no. But before we go, I do definitely want to you know just thank you as well again for having me on here. Definitely a good opportunity. So. Not a problem. Not a problem. Always a pleasure. Uh, one of the things that I've really enjoyed about this is uh, just getting to meet other hobbyists. I don't know if in your case, but I know I've said this a bunch of times. I'm the only one in my family that is that is keeping aquariums. And, you know, that's saying a lot, <laughs> you know, because we have very big families. And I'm talking about extended family, too, that when we get to, when we have a get together, I'm the only crazy one that has aquariums and not only one but i have multiple aquariums so that even makes me weirder in their eyes so yeah yeah my, my mother-in-law has a small aquarium actually she has the old corner one i used to have okay uh, she has that one now you know i have a cousin a little cousin that you know likes to keep a few guppies and stuff but no other than that nobody nobody gets this deep into it i guess <laughs> <laughs> well austin i want to say thank you and uh you know i, I love to see you hit a thousand i think you're well on your way to get there pretty quick 
and uh, and just waiting to see what else you put out next. All right, thank you again. Thank you for having me. All right, well, and, and thank you everybody else that just started coming in. Um, you know, if you weren't able to get the the entire interview, you can always go back and replay it. And and um, thank you so much. And we'll see you guys soon. You guys take care. All right, hope to do it again. <laughs>